final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is brought to you by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust. Also brought to you by Delta, official airline of BYU basketball. Here's your host, Cleon Wall. Welcome to Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires, the team you trust, BYU 100, Westminster 70. Let's go over what I liked and didn't like from the second half of this game. Take everything I say with a little bit of a grain of salt just because of who played, and that's what I actually like to start out, that we got to see increased playing time from the bench players. It wasn't pretty at times, but at least they got some run. Mark Pope could have left his starters in longer, but it was good to see the starters get some rest and hopefully not get hurt. It was also good to see the bench players get out and be able to play some regular minutes. In fact, if you go over the minutes, uh, most of the people that, you you know, took on the most minutes were bench players. Trey Stewart had 23 minutes in this game. Uh, Atiki, Ali Atiki had 22 minutes in this game. A few of the starters were around 21 minutes. So, again, nice to see the starters get some rest and the bench players actually get some playing time to see what they can do for you coming off the bench. Uh, I did like that BYU breaks the three-point record. I, you know, you'd love it if it was against someone other than Westminster. But, again, I feel like I'm nitpicking here. It probably won't be broken against a team like Gonzaga, so it's nice that they just broke it. 19 three-pointers in this game. Hopefully it gives these guys confidence to keep shooting. Then again, they had plenty of chances to get that 20 three-pointer, and they just kept missing and missing and missing. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm neutral on this. I'm not sure I like or dislike this. I, I could complain about BYU's defense in the second half, but when you have a big lead and you know you're going to win, things can get a little bit sloppy or attention to detail can wane. I'm sure they'll work on defense before they play South Dakota. I mean, um, Westminster only had 26 points in the first half, and they end up with 70. That's not really surprising in a basketball game. Uh, Things I didn't like, BYU free throw shooting. Woof. Not very good. 11 for 20 in this game. That's 55%. Uh, 5 for 11 in the second half. Uh, Yeah, not good. They need to work on that. <laughs> they they really need to work on that, especially after playing and running and things like that. They, they they really need to just work on free throw shooting. This this is a team that made 19 three pointers in this game. You think a team that made 19 three pointers would shoot better from the free throw line? But maybe the guys who were shooting the threes were going to the line a lot. It's the other guys who were going to the line more. Uh, other things I didn't like: uh, Trey Stewart finishing. He's having a tough time scoring. Period. Right now, it was good to see him get a dunk, but he's he's got to learn to finish with people who are around him or people who are challenging him. That's going to be the way he scores most of his points, I think, as the season goes along. Uh, And the other thing I'd probably say I didn't like, and this is a real big nitpick, uh, Cougars commit double-digit turnovers. They had six at the half. I was really hoping they would keep it to three in the second half, but they picked up a fourth, and so they were at 10. So an improvement, uh, I yeah, and I wasn't sure how realistic my goal for the other for the team was going to be, especially since uh, you had the bench players playing. It's still really good. Again, that's a real big nitpick on my part. Uh, fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. Use the online promo code BYU50 on the app or at PapaJohns.com. Tomorrow, use it tomorrow and receive fifty percent off pizza. This offer is good at any Utah location tomorrow only. Coming up next, updates from college basketball games across the nation. Your final score tonight, BYU 100 and Westminster 70. More Cougar Post Game Live comes your way next on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Here's Cleon Wall with more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Post Game Live, presented by Big O Tires. BYU has no problem with Westminster beating them 100 to 70 in this game. Jackson Robinson scored 15 points to be one of the leaders, the point leaders for the Cougars. He scored all 15 points in the first half. Gideon George also had 15 points in this game. No Waterman, 13. Rudy Williams, 14 in this game. And then Tanner Toulson off the bench had 10 points in this game. Unfortunately for him, he was also one for five at the free throw line. All right, scores from around the nation. There's at least uh, a couple of teams, at least one team I know who's still playing that is top 25 action. Actually, two teams still playing in top 25 action. 24th ranked San Diego State is leading UC Irvine at the half 32 
to 30. Third ranked Virginia is playing at Michigan. 746 left to go in that game, and it's all tied up at 58. 19th ranked Kentucky has no problem in the second half with Bellerin. They beat them 60 to 41. That game played at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Louisville also played at home uh, in Kentucky. They didn't quite have the same uh, outcome as as their Blue Brethren. Louisville loses tonight 79-54 to the 22nd-ranked Maryland Terrapins. Syracuse went to go play at Illinois as part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. 16th-ranked Illinois beat Syracuse tonight 73-44. to Number one ranked Houston. This is a team BYU is going to be playing next year or in the years to come in the Big 12, and they are good. They are 7-0 and now after beating Norfolk State 100-52. Yeah, they scored 100 tonight also. Uh, sixth ranked Baylor, they're going to be dropping down in the rankings because they lost at Marquette tonight as part of the Big East Big 12 battle. Marquette wins 96-70. Marquette went on a 14 nothing run in the first half, and they were leading 51-25 to at halftime. And then it was all even in the second half. Again, Marquette beat sixth-ranked Baylor 96-70. to Big Sky action, Weber State. Well, actually, one Big Sky team we'll tell you about. Weber State now 2-5 and on the season, 0-3 away from their home gym in Ogden as they lose at Tarleton tonight, 75-65. to That game played in Stephenville, Texas. NBA action tonight. One game going on right now. Portland Trail Blazers hosting the LA LA Clippers. Right now the Blazers have a 59-53 lead over the Clippers. There's 10 seconds left to go before halftime. Two finals in the NBA. The New York Knicks beat the Detroit Pistons tonight 140 to 110. Julius Randle had 36 points and seven rebounds for the winning New York Knickerbockers. And the Dallas Mavericks beat the uh, Golden State Warriors tonight, 116-113. Klay Thompson had a great shot to tie the game up at the end of regulation, but he missed it, missed a three-pointer, and that's how it ends. Mavericks win 116-130. to uh, All right, after the break, we'll send you back to Vivint Arena for more Cougar Post Game Live with Greg, Mark, and Gideon George. The Cougars crush the Griffins 100 to 70. You are listening to the new skin BYU Sports Network. Here's Greg Rubel with more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. BYU on the strength of a program record 19. Three-point field goals defeats Westminster by a final score of 100 to 70 tonight here at Vivint Arena in downtown Salt Lake City. Greg Rubel with Mark Durant and joining us on Cougar Post Game Live is Gideon George. Gideon, 15 points on five of six shooting tonight. Gideon, thank you for making the long walk up. Oh, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Congrats to you and the guys. Nice, no, nice work tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Um, I think the guys really fought hard today and. We played for each other today, so that was like one of the things I'm proud about the guys tonight. And a number of different players who hadn't played yet this season got in the game, and that's always fun to see. Yeah, like seeing um, Tully, um, TH, all of them stepping on the floor and playing is like, you know, you just got that joy just seeing them playing and just seeing them happy. See, see them like Tully, he got 10 points tonight, and I'm really proud of him for that because he keeps keeping on on the course and he's just ready when his name was called and he delivered tonight well Gideon you're playing great basketball and BYU fans are so happy you're here I know this summer this first chance we've had a chance to talk with you after the after a game this summer you tested some different options with the NBA what what was the kind of the final determination for you in coming back to play another year here at BYU um I'm gonna tell you this like you ain't gonna find coach like the coaching staff that uh coach pope have here at byu so it's like um i remember like him recruiting me him coming out to new mexico out of nowhere to recruit me and he coming out to spend time with me and my brother it's going to be hard for you to see like college coaches they always keep to what they say so i was like 
is the relationship that really matters to me. So mm. and my brother doubled down with that. So he understand. He played like D1 ball. So he really knows. And he's like, you ain't gonna find no one in the country like Coach Pope. So that's why I came back. BYU through eight games now. Gideon is five and three. And you've had some some tough losses that have kind of tested the team's resolve, but some really high highs as well. Nothing higher than the Dayton game uh, to end things in the Bahamas. That must have been made the flight feel a little shorter on the way home, maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm really like proud about our guys. Like we get to know ourselves in the Bahamas, though. We got a lot of guys that play hard on this team, so that's what you ask for. You see the next guy sitting uh, close to you is playing hard. You want to play hard, so that's what I think we discover with our team in the. Bahamas like if they keep punching out if they keep punching us in the mouth and we, we still we just this team is just relentless we just keep going no matter what we still keep fighting and going so I'm really proud about the guys for doing that and now you're fighting to win games without Spencer Johnson Spence is out you got to find another another way to get it done yeah uh, man Spence is a big piece um, a big part about uh, this team and we don't want to miss him and he's just it is what it is and and I know he's taking care of himself and um, you know and we're going to play for that man and we're going to win games for him too Gideon you guys set a record 19 threes all time that's the highest number of threes ever by a BYU team tonight did you guys uh, uh, I mean you struggled a little bit up and down this year with the three point shooting but do you did you feel you, this team had it in had it in you to get 19 or even more in the future I don't even know we got 19, but that's that's pretty good, though. That, that means we got shooters on the team. We got a lot of guys that can shoot the ball really good. Uh, Jackson Robinson and Noah Waterman, Rudy, and, of course, Spencer. We're missing a big part about Spencer. And Dowling, Richie, you know, they come, they're come. like guys that can shoot the ball, basketball really good. So I'm really proud of, about those guys for doing that tonight. Well, you were also part of that mix as well. Gideon, nice work by you and the entire team getting a solid win. We're back here on Saturday, back in the home of the Jazz. Yeah, it's really fun, you know, to play in an NBA environment. <laughs> you know? The spacing is like a lot of spacing, and so it's really hard, you know. And um, Coach Pope always said we should shoot from Cali 3 and instead of shooting in, in the, the NBA 3. <laughs> right. so, so we're trying to get guys to shoot the Cali 3 because it's really hard. Because when you plan to feed, you only see the first line right, or the second. Right. Online, so I think we're getting adjusted to that, and it's pretty fun. Well, we hope you have many more NBA environments in your future, but for now, we're so glad you're here at BYU. Gideon, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me here. Thank you guys so much. All right, that is Gideon George. Head coach Mark Pope is coming up next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Four. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Mark Pope. It's the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Economic Partners, a national leader in business valuation services. Learn more at econpartners.com. Let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We start our BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show with the Economics Partners Valuable Stat of the Game. Whether for tax, financial reporting, or strategic purposes, when your business needs a valuation, the right partner is Economics Partners. Learn more at econpartners.com. And on this record-setting night from the three-point line, BYU with 19 threes, we zoom in on the first half and three-point shooting before halftime, Mark. And the Cougs went 13 of 18 from the arc, 72.2% from mm. deep. To put themselves on rep, put themselves on record pace for tonight, a record they broke, and that just warms the cockles of my heart, Greg. That's an amazing number. That's an incredible game number for BYU, and they get it in the first half. Just remarkable. So 13 of 18 in the first half from three, and the Cougs end up shooting on the night 19 for 37, still over 51 percent from the three-point line. The other three-point line tonight as Gideon was saying <laughs> the temptation is always to set your feet at the NBA line but there is a second line and it's the college line and the Cougars hit a few from behind there as well uh, between the two but either way head coach Mark Pope has made the long trek up from courtside to concourse level to join us here on the BYU Creamery Cougar postgame coaches show something you had to remind your guys of a couple times tonight was there is another line yeah. right yes yes <laughs> 
So the guys, every time we come in here, the guys are like, one is just habit, right? So there's just this perception habit of like lining up at the line and we don't have two lines on our court. And, and um, there's also this, you know, excitement about proving to everybody in the NBA that I can go make these shots too. <laughs> but I thought our guys were pretty disciplined today. I was proud of them. Record setting night, 19 threes. No BYU team had ever made 19 triples in a game. That's a lot. That's like two games for Mark Durant. <laughs> I think that's a, a career two. total right there. <laughs> 19, I might be pushing it, but one of the guys uh, it was the best of the best. I mean, you had a lot of good shooters, but it was Jackson Robinson had five for five in the first half. He's probably yep. a guy that doesn't matter where the line is. He just, wherever he's feeling it, he's got such a smooth stroke. And, you know, I, he, it's interesting to me, Coach, uh, you see guys come in, and maybe the first five or six games they'll struggle uh, from the three-point line. And then they find that range, and, man, look out. And he seems to be th- that guy that just, you know, he worked on the uh, shot after after game when he was struggling, and now he's he's kind of zeroed in. And, and he may be that good from the, th- the three-point line. Just just uh, what, what he showed tonight may not be an aberration. Well, he, you know, he is when you watch him shoot, I mean, have you ever seen a ball come out of a hand? a guy's hand easier it's, yeah. it's really impressive and he's got unbelievable balance like he actually you know he can actually shoot uh you know he can come off staggers come off america's uh like at full speed for him his full speed is a, a really functional glide um but he, he really can get his feet set also but what i'm really proud of him tonight is all the shots are good like that's where he's really changed like he's just he's just allowing the team to work hard to earn him shots and um He's finishing them, and and uh, I think he's 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 got a, you know, he cer- certainly has a, a, a tremendous talent as a shot maker. Now, the best thing about Jackson Robinson is he came to this game just he just want he he's like I got to guard I got to figure out a way to guard. We, we, Spencer's out. We got to fix this thing, and he he really has a, a huge quiet impact on the game defensively, and that's that's where his focus is and. This game always, when you focus on the things that matter most, all the other stuff seems to just happen, and that's exactly what happened for him tonight. What's an America call for you on offense? Uh, it's just a cross screen, down screen. Okay. Just a America's play is, I don't know if it was invented in America, but it's just like standard, standard fare for us. Okay. So uh, BYU with uh, back-to-back wins and four straight games with the turnover number coming down, 10 tonight. Yep, I was I was so excited. I thought there was a chance we'd get under ten. We came out of halftime with six. Uh, it was the first time we we've gotten halftime with with nobody with multiple turnovers. So I was pleased with that. Um, and and the guys are trying. You know, we we had a couple tonight that were careless, but they're trying. They're thinking about it. We're trying to make better decisions. We're trying to buy ourselves more time to make decisions. Um, and and that, that's not going to go away. This is going to be an issue for us all year long. It's an issue for every team, but. But this is a place, it's going to be a marker for us in terms of our offensive success if we can really care for this ball. You mentioned Mark Durant's prolific uh, three-point shooting. Uh, another legacy Cougar is uh, Tanner Toulson. And Gideon George was just so happy. He calls him Thule, of course. Yep. He said he was so happy for Thule to score 10 points tonight. Yep. And Tanner saw his first regular season action uh, for you uh, tonight. Yeah, and Thule the same thing. You know, I, 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 Listen, I think we all know Thule can make shots. Like, And he's got a, he's got a, a pretty good sense about him offensively. Like he's He's got a really good feel. Um, you know, there's not a lot of adjustments in his game that he needs to make to fit the way we play. Sometimes we have guys in our program where they have to learn a completely new way to approach the game. And for Thule, he doesn't. Like, this is a lot of these things, a lot of his instincts um, happen to fit exactly what we do. But again, tonight, like, he walked in this game exactly the way he should have, where his focus was on the defensive end. And, and I, 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 t- I told him, like, hey, just come out here and prove to me that you can guard, that you can do that. And he, he, he's, he's certainly earned himself another chance to, you know, find some minutes um, on Saturday. And, and again, it's going to be the emphasis to be like, hey, can you prove that you can guard, that you can help us on the defensive end? And I thought his focus was great tonight. So in furtherance of that, he, he, he acquitted himself nicely out there. You've, you've liked to have the two five, the two groups of five playing minutes together just to get some familiarity. 
with Spencer out, do you think uh, Toulson will fill that, or are you just still kind of filling that out? Yeah, I mean, you know, I actually liked getting away from that a little bit in the in the Bahamas, right. and and we're going to get away from that. It's been a, it's been a it's kind of been like the the training wheels, uh, and and we're getting close to where we got to start to take them off. I mean, we just have to because these games are get more and more and more competitive these next two weeks. Every game gets so much harder and. And um, so, I, you know, I'm certainly not going to go fives like I did tonight. But uh, I do think that Thule is going to find places where he can help us here, especially if he stays dialed in on, on guarding and rebounding. It is the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show, brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Closing comments with Coach Mark Pope are coming up. BYU 100, Westminster 70, our final score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU now 5-3 and three on the year with a 170 win over Westminster tonight here at the home of the Utah Jazz, Vivint Arena in downtown Salt Lake City. Coach Mark Pope joining us for his final segment. I'm sure, Coach, that in the early part of the summer, uh, before you got injury news on Trevin, you never thought you'd be hitting this part of the year without a Trevin Nell and a Spencer Johnson at the same time with a new yeah. team. It's uh, it's our, you know, those are the two like most senior veteran guys that 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 kind of knew us the best, and so we've taken both those guys out of the mix at least temporarily. And and um, you know, it, 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 it you just have you just get to make a choice, and the choice we're making is to see it as an opportunity for other guys to step up and learn and grow and. And that's what we have to do, and and I think our guys, you know, our guys are going to get a chance to do it. You know, like I said, this is an unbelievable opportunity for Tuli to to go get on the floor and and kind of stake his claim to uh, you know a, a on court position on this team right now. We talked uh, briefly in pregame about Spencer. We haven't talked about Trevin Nell in, in quite a while. What is the status uh, of Trevin, and and could he see see the floor this year? Well, Trev is shooting now, so he's he's able to shoot. That was kind of the, the quickest return. Um, the, you know the the first thing, uh, the the question for him is going to be how long it takes to get strong enough to actually endure the contact of the game, and so that's going to be a while. We're still quite a ways out from from even having a chance at that right now. Okay, well, one guy stepping up, I think, in that leadership role is Rudy Williams. I thought he played great tonight, and you know there was a time the first couple of games I I really wondered can you afford to have him on the floor because he's turning the ball over so much. Just one turnover tonight. And uh, four assists for him. I think he's really kind of just figuring out what he needs to do and making better decisions and really doing a nice job running the team. Yeah, I I mean, he's made unbelievable progress uh, with his assist turnover situation. Now, he set the floor really low early on in the season. So he was like, yeah, I'm I'm a a good pace myself. I could really grow. Uh, But he is, uh, his whole heart is in this, and he's really trying. Like, I mean, you talk about a guy that we've been spending a ridiculous amount of time with and asking him to do so many different things and change his game in so many different ways, and he is willing. Like, he is really trying um, to kind of grow into this position that this team needs him to fill. And um, and it's not like we're actually spending more time on the off- the defensive end of the ball with him than we are at the offensive end, and he's and he's willing to try, and and that's the that's such a huge deal. Uh, you know, he's been such a consummate example of a great teammate when things are going good and things are going bad. He he still stays in there with his guys. He really is happy for all of his guys, and um, but we got to keep making progress. You know, we we got a long way to go. Who still find a way uh, to lead your team in rebounding tonight with eight uh, to go along with his four points? Yeah, I thought that was the best thing Foos gave us early in the game. He came up with some really big contested, you know, free space rebounds um, where he just he just dominated that space, uh, and, and I thought um, I thought he was terrific on the glass. Okay, you're back here on Saturday, uh, four and four South Dakota. Uh, coming in for your second of two here uh, at Vivint. Yeah, the South Dakota team is really good. They're super dangerous. They just came off a game last night, I think, where they shot 55% for the three-point line. I think made 20 or 19 or 20 or 21 threes in a game. Uh, 19, 19 for 33. Yeah. Last. So the, you, you scored, you hit 19 tonight. They hit 19 last night. Yeah, and they're they're <laughs> really, uh, they shoot at one through five. You know, their five man was four for five from the three uh, last night. Mm-hmm. So they
They shoot at every position. They really, really spread the floor. They're really, really great executing offensively. They're a super, super dangerous team. And if they're making shots, they're going to be difficult for anybody to beat. So we, we got our work cut out for us. And, you know, we're going to have to come into this game with the edge defensively and see if we can, you know, see if we can uh, be a little bit disruptive and make them a little bit less comfortable than they, they certainly were last night. So a hard guard coming in here on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, BYU and Westminster tonight to BYU and South Dakota on Saturday. That'll be a one thirty tip. Jazz have the Blazers, I think, Saturday at 7, so they'll flip things around pretty quickly after BYU gets out of here on Saturday afternoon. Coach, we'll have you in Studio C tomorrow night for a coach's show at uh, 6.30, and we will see you then before we're back here on the weekend. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. you. That is Mark Pope. We'll come back and close it out here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Season highs for BYU in field goal percentage and three-point field goal percentage. It was BYU's first game over 50%, and uh, they were even over 50 from the uh, three-point line as well. How about this in back-to-back games? Dayton, 48%. Westminster, 51%. So the Cougs have made 32 threes over the last two games. 13 against the Flyers, 19 against the Griffins. 32 threes in two games, that will usually uh, result in a 2-0 record, and that's what happened for BYU winning against Dayton in the Bahamas and Westminster here tonight. So 55% from the field, 51 from three, uh, working nicely for BYU as the Cougs go to 5-3. and three. Greg, there's a concept in the law called uh, treble damages, and BYU did some treble damage in this <laughs> one. And I, I've never seen anything like that because it's never happened before. Great shooting. Jackson was terrific. Noah started out knocking them down, and everybody kind of chipped in. Everybody got a couple of them. That was pretty fun to watch. And uh, I like what I like about this team right now is I think they're settling into some consistency. You're getting consistent performances from, like, Rudy and Gideon and Jackson and and Foos, and uh, I think that's important. And you, the the, pro, the the real glaring problem areas, turnovers and poor three point shooting, are not rearing their head as often. So I think that's important. They're making progress, getting better, and I uh, look forward to Saturday. So the Cougs improve on their uh, very impressive Vivint Arena record when they play in downtown Salt Lake City. Things tend to go well. Coach Pope now four and zero in NBA venues. Here a little trivia for you, Mark, to end the program. So Coach Pope is four and zero in NBA arenas. 3-0 in Vivint. What's the other NBA gym in which Coach Pope won a game to go to 4-0? Uh, probably up at, what, Portland when they beat there Oregon? There we go. Yeah, yeah. Just last year. Moda Center. Moda Center. Yeah, so that's uh, Coach Pope staying perfect in the NBA venues as BYU defeats Westminster tonight by a final score of 100-70. to All right, that's going to do it. Let's thank the crew back at BYU Radio. Cleon Wall sitting in for Jason Shepard tonight in our scoreboard studio. Terry South, as always, our ever-vigilant coordinating producer. Our control board operators, Adam Woodall and Seth Larson. Barry Squires, our BYU radio engineer. Courtside, or high above courtside in this case, our appreciation goes out to Gideon George and Mark Pope, our postgame guest, to BYU basketball media relations director Tyson Jex, as always, for his hours of service and helping us be our best. And that is leaving my color commentary partner, Mark Durant, and I, as the only two, to say thank you, and we'll do so by expressing our appreciation for you joining us tonight as the Cougs win it by 30. So for Mark, my name is Greg, saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Men's Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night.